I'm Risa. I'm a mom. I'm a classical musician turned web and graphic designer, turned digital marketing consultant, turned community organizer. And like many multi-hyphenates, I'm also a former gifted kid. But like many former gifted kids, I once had a teacher who thought I had ADHD. But my mom was having none of it. She thought, you understand the materials, you do OK in school, so you can't have ADHD. You're too smart for that. So she had me tested, and I was put in the gifted program. But I still managed to struggle in school. I just didn't know how to prioritize tasks well. So as my son went through the ADHD diagnostic process, I saw a lot of the same symptoms in myself. So at the age of 32, I also was diagnosed with ADHD. And suddenly I had answers. I had a why for my struggles with task initiation and prioritization. But it's just a starting point when you get a diagnosis, right? So my new hyperfixation became ADHD itself and how other people cope with it. How do they initiate tasks when their brains are screaming that there are just too many steps? Spoon theory was the first concept to really click for me. Writer Christine Miserandino came up with it when her friend asked her what it was like to live with lupus. She used the tools that they had at the dining table, and eventually she fleshed it out more fully into an essay. The basic idea is that all the tasks you do throughout the day cost a certain number of spoons. Every day you wake up with a certain number of spoons, and it varies from day to day, even more so when you have a disability or an illness or a chronic pain disorder. So, Let's say you start the day with 100 spoons. Getting ready for work costs five. Getting the kids ready for school costs 10. You're barely sitting down to work, and you're already down 15%. But what if you only woke up with 50 spoons that day, and you have a work project that you know is going to take 25? How do you decide what other tasks get done or get skipped? That was my struggle. So one day, while I'm avoiding this struggle, I'm doom scrolling on TikTok, which is basically a tailor-made dopamine drip for people with ADHD, by the way, and I came across an expression that changed my life. My own personal hakuna matata, anything worth doing is worth half-assing. Now, stay with me here. I don't mean it's okay to be sloppy and careless. I just mean that if it needs to be done, it's probably important enough that it doesn't have to be perfect. Because when you've let go of perfect, priorities become a lot more clear. Task initiation becomes a lot easier when you know that the task list is shorter. And when tasks are initiated, they're well on their way to being done because you already have inertia. Take brushing your teeth, for example. You should brush for two minutes, morning and night, and you should floss daily. But if you're struggling, it's better to brush for 45 seconds than to not brush at all. Anything worth doing is worth half-assing. Same thing goes for the gym. <laughs> Sometimes our bodies say no to that full hour class at FitFam, sorry, but a 15 minute walk is better than doing nothing. Anything worth doing is worth half-assing. Now, could I phrase this differently? Sure. The concept is basically don't let perfect be the enemy of done. But when you're already struggling, you can be gentle with yourself in order to give yourself a little kick in the pants you might need. Now don't forget, this is a capacity budget cut tool. You need that comfort. You need that gentleness and you need that playfulness. Because the goal is gonna be to give yourself permission to cut back where you need to. Don't spend 10 spoons when five will suffice. You're going to have to make those uncomfortable decisions between perfect and incomplete, or complete and imperfect. So consider, when is imperfect going to create room for collaboration and teamwork? When is imperfect going to be a burden on the people depending on me? Because at the end of the day, that's what this is for. The family, the colleagues, customers, clients, and peers that depend on us. Prioritize wisely and apply judiciously because only you can determine those priorities. And if you can figure those out, you can account and even budget for imperfection as you prioritize your day-to-day. -day. 
More often than not, it's going to be more important to get the task done than it will be to get it two-thirds of the way perfectly. We all want to be our best selves. And sometimes all we need is permission to let go of perfect. So just remember, anything worth doing is worth half-assing. <laughs>